Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, men of God. Welcome to the National Men's Prayer Call. Men of God, we get excited every Tuesday and Thursday morning because we get to come before you, not only in prayer, but God has blessed us tremendously over the past, going on 10 years, uh, to have this in format here, and we're grateful and thank you. Reggie, I muted you, I'm sorry. Just wanted to share uh, this morning, uh, men of God, all the men of God here with the National Men's Prayer Call are uh, heartbroken uh, for the loss of brother, Dr. Uh, Dent, daughter, uh, Megan. Uh, we actually have been uh, just praying for her uh, that day within less than, less than eight hours and found and uh, heard the news about her passing. Uh, so all heart just went out uh, uh, regarding this year uh, for you and your family, uh, Dr. Dent, and also Megan's husband and his family. Uh, we just don't know really what, what to say. Uh, I just, I asked God, I said, I, I was just kind of shocked. And, uh, and then and God said, you continue to praise me like you were praising and thanking me for her. That's what I want you to do because uh, she, she, she's covered. And I just said, okay, Lord, thank you. And I just, that's so, uh, again, on behalf of uh, the National Miss Prayer Call, Dr. Den, our family and your family, we just, uh, our just prayers going out to you. And uh, we just want to let you know that we're definitely praying and covering you and your family with the blood of Jesus. So thank you so much uh, just for what you've done, what you're doing for us here at the National Men's Prayer Call. So, men of God, just continue to lift the family up. Uh, I would like to also just to like to say thank you, uh, Brother uh, Victor, for taking time out of your busy schedule uh, to join us and pour into us this morning. Uh, men of God, for those of you who are jumping on the line now, I would just like to say that uh, you're in for a treat. Uh, this gentleman is just outstanding. I can remember years ago when he first came on and uh, he just left us with so much knowledge. And uh, so I would just say you just be prepared. Uh, take notes and also just uh, make sure you uh, get a chance to just really just share with someone else to be able to listen in uh, here this morning. Uh, men of God, again, we're just so excited that you've taken time out to uh, fellowship with us this morning. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just get, I think I'm hearing some feedback. I'm going to go ahead and open us up in prayer and then we're going to get this gentleman out of the bullpen because I know he's ready to go. Uh, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. We come to you this morning, Lord. First of all, we want to take time out to say thank you. Uh, we want to say thank you for your goodness and your mercy. And Lord, again, Lord, we just thank you right now, Lord, because we know no man knows the time, the day or the hour, Lord, but you know. <laughs> and Lord, we just put our trust and faith in you because that's what your word says for us to do. So we won't be obedient for that, Lord. And Father, I just thank you right now, Lord. Thank you for who you are and for what you're doing in the midst of us right now. As I'm speaking right now, Lord, words, we, uh, there's no words to even describe how, how we're feeling right now during this time of, of, of sadness. But Lord, you, we just ask that we put our, our trust in you, that you give us strength that we need, Lord. And Father, we thank you for that because the word says it'll never return void but it would accomplish that, what it was sent out to do, Lord. So, Lord, we're going to lean on that and we're going to trust in you. And, Father, we thank you for that, Lord. We just thank you right now, Lord, for just ask right now, Lord, to continue for what you're doing, Lord, here in the midst of all of us, Lord, with this still, Lord, with things that's taking place, Lord, with this pandemic, Lord. We, we're not taking anything for granted, Lord, because we know that you're sovereign and we know that you're in control. And Lord, we just ask right now and you continue to bless those, Lord, that don't just first responders, Lord, those that are continue, Lord, to just work tireless. Father, just to keep us safe, Lord. But Father, we thank you for them, blessing them, Lord, giving them the strength that they need, Lord. And hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for that this morning, Lord. And Father, we just ask right now, Lord, you continue to, Lord, to lift each and every man that's on this call, Lord. They're on this call for one purpose. That's just to hear a word from you, Lord. And we thank you right now for sending the man of the hour this morning. Lord, we thank you right now. You just ask that he would speak not of himself nor the flesh, Lord, but cover him with the blood of Jesus. 
And Lord, I just thank you right now. Anything he put his hands on will prosper. And Lord, I thank you. Continue to give him the knowledge and the wisdom, Father, uh, for his successful uh, real estate business, Lord, and other adventures that he has. Lord, continue to bless him and just broaden his horizon. Lord, thank you for that. And thank you for his wife and his daughter, Lord. Thank you for blessing him, Lord. Oh, God, we just give you all the praise for him, Lord. And we thank you right now, Lord, that every need is met in each and every man's household, according to riches and glory in Christ Jesus. There's no lack. Ah, thank you for being the supplier that you are. The Bible says you have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. So we thank you for that. Thank you for being the provider that you are. And Lord, we just thank you right now for complete healing in each and every man's body. From the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, we bind any attack that the enemy may try to come against us. The Bible says there is no weapon of form that against us will prosper. We thank you for being Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee. Thank you for that. And Father, we thank you right now for blessing us with our help, mate. We're grateful for our help, mate. Because the word said a house can't stand if it's divided. And two cannot be together except they agree on the word. It is the word of God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. So we thank you for that. Thank you for our offspring, Lord. We praise you and thank you for them. Pray for those that are going to school, those that are going to their workplace, wherever it may be. We thank you that your hedge protection is covering them right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. We thank you for that. We thank you for your hedge protection each and every campus worldwide. Oh, God, thank you for that. And Father, we just give you all the praise. And Lord, we thank you right now, Lord, for blessing those that are in need of prayer. Lord, we just ask that you continue to lift up our leader, Dr. Kenneth Green, the founder of the National Men's Prayer Call. We thank you for this outstanding man of God. And we just thank you. He's getting stronger and stronger each and every day. <laughs> thank you for him. Thank you for First Lady Greens is always standing beside him. Oh, thank you for this wonderful woman of God. And Lord, we just thank you right now, Lord, for those that are asking for prayer. Lord, I'd just like to ask right now that you continue to lift up our good friend, Miss Grace Edwards. Uh, right now, she's, she's right now, she's in the hospital, but we just thanking God because we know that she has the victory. We know that she walks by faith and not by sight. So, Lord, I just thank you right now, Lord, that we just thank you right now for the praise report, Lord. <laughs> oh, God, we thank you for that. We know who you are. Lord, we ask, continue to give her strength. And, Lord, we just thank you right now also for blessing our good friend of ours, um, Palestine, Lord, we ask right now, Father, the challenges she's facing, Lord, and Lord, we know who you are. We trust in you, Lord. And Father, we ask you to continue to lift up, um, like a friend, uh, Brother Robert Prince's mom, Mrs. Prince. Lord, we thank you right now that uh, this uh, infection was in her foot has subsided. And thank you, Father, for healing. Oh, God, we thank you for healing, Lord. Oh, God, we just trust in you, Lord. And Lord, we continue, continue to lean on you and trust in you. Because that's what your word says for us to be able to do, Lord. And we thank you for equipping us, Lord, equipping us for the battle. The Bible says that the harvest is right, but the labors are few. Use us, Lord. Use us. Use us, Father, the way you want to use us, Lord. And we thank you right now for that. And then once again, men of God, as we continue to on, but move forward, Lord, we just ask you to continue to lift up our own Dr. Dent and his family. Only you can, God, because we trust you that you would give them the comfort, the strength, and the peace that they need during this time. And we trust in you, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Well, amen, brother. Amen. Hey, gentlemen, we are just so, um, just so in awe that God would choose us to, to do the things that, uh, that he's chosen us to do. And um, as we're moving forward, we just want to just... Want just to know that the, the heartfelt condolences and prayers of the National Men's Prayer Call are with Dr. Dent because he's a part of this community and a part of this family. And we just thank you that we've been able to come to the Lord in, pr in prayer and lift her up so that we're able to move forward with our lives. And we're talking about maximizing manhood. You know, we're looking at everything that, that man does. If he does it to a with a degree of excellence. And if he incorporates the, the four core values that are the foundation of the National Men's Prayer Call, then he would be able to enter into maximize manhood. And those four core values are maturity, decisiveness, 
consistency, and strength. Last month, we talked about maturity, and it was an eye-opening, powerful, focused uh, uh, presentation. If you haven't, you go back and listen to those. They'll bless you real good. And this month, we're talking about decisiveness. Now, uh, Coach Benny um, Franklin laid out a full foundation for decisiveness on Tuesday. But today, buckle up your seats, because we have uh, a returning guest speaker, uh, Victor Van Nico Johnson. Now, Victor is a he's a uh, an investor. He's a motivational speaker. He's an author. He's a he's a he is a maximized man living his maximized manhood. And we want to share his perspective this morning on decisiveness. So, uh, so uh, are you are you there, Mr. Victor? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you hear me loud and clear? Loud and clear. And you just go ahead on and take it from here. Thank you so much, Dr. Mack. Reggie Tyner, man, I'm always uh, electrified by your prayer, man. It really just lights me up. And I, I'm sure the men that are listening and are tuned in here this morning are feeling the same way that I do. Thank you for the invite, gentlemen. Again, my name is Victor Vanico Johnson. Y'all can call me Vic. Uh, and I, I do want to speak on decisiveness. And listen, you know, I'm not an ordained minister. Um, I don't have a church of my own that I, I preach at or anything. And that'll be very apparent as we go along. But I am going to be speaking about decisiveness from the lens of an entrepreneur, uh, from the lens of, again, a gentleman in real estate, a father, I'm a husband, uh, I'm a, a son and mentor, community leader. And um, I was listening the other day when Benny eloquently was going through the four uh, values that you guys just mentioned. You mentioned that the four values are maturity, decisiveness, consistency, and strength. My God, those are definite characteristics. If you see a man walking with those four uh, characteristics on his chest, you better step out his way. He is a man on mission for sure. And what Benny broke down was that decisiveness. He get, actually gave the definition. So I'm going to repeat that for those listening. The ability to make clear cut and timely decisions with the appropriate amount of information. Again, the ability to make clear cut and timely decisions with the appropriate amount of information. I also saw a definition of decisiveness listed as the characteristic or practice, the practice of deciding or acting without hesitation. So, I mean, for you to be a person who can act without hesitation, you need to build yourself up pretty well. And I was thinking about some other words that might remind me of like, what really is decisiveness? It will be words like assertiveness, being confident, you know, firmness and having willpower in the things that you do. And it's not easy. You know, oftentimes our decisions are uh, influenced by those around us. They're not even of ourselves. We're uh, so much impacted by the things that we consume and take in that we don't even know half the time if the decision we're making is of our true authentic self. And so that's one thing that I want to discuss with this group today are some things that I have found in my entrepreneur, entrepreneurial walk uh, and before even being an entrepreneur as a business leader in the corporate world, some things that had to change within me to make me more assertive about the decisions that I make, to make me more confident in my walk. And so I'm going to share some things with you all today that I feel uh, will help us to be more decisive because as, as a decisive man, you are assertive. You're showing your family that I can make decisions on our behalf that are going to be in our best interest, that are going to be protective of our future, our legacy, uh, things that will not put you in harm's way. And so as a leader, as a man uh, of your household, as a man in your business, I think these are key tenants. And again, these are through the lens of a 48-year-old Black man. I'm an entrepreneur, business owner. And so Think about your own personal self. Again, we want your decision making to come from an authentic place, a place of yourself. But if I can just share a few things that will help you, uh, these would be the three things that I would share, the three bullets, if you will, to raise my level of decisiveness, being more assertive. So number one will be establishing my standards. We can't do anything without standards, gentlemen. Uh, and, and what are standards, right? Standards are those things that your rules, the principles that you live by, the basis of all of your judgment. 
And again, for you to be in a position where you're confident in uh, the decisions that you make, you need to have some kind of level of standard, something that you will not accept in your life, some level where it says, ah, no, no, that's just taking it too far. I'm not willing to do that for that decision, or I'm not willing to go there on behalf of uh, my family or myself. You know, uh, again, I'm 48. There was a time in my much younger version of Victor Johnson where I married this young lady and I was married a very short period of time, maybe six months. And I had lowered my standards. I didn't even have standards probably now that I look back at it. But this was a pretty woman. I was right at the age of 30 years old. Um, I was kind of messing around with a few different ladies at the time. And my sister had come into town and was looking around. I was like, man, when are you going to settle down, Victor? You know, this is the, my older sister talking at me. And, you know, again, at that age of 30, there's probably a man or two out there listening that's in that age range. And he's like, yeah, man, everybody's pressuring me to get married, get married. And that's how I felt at that time. In my career, I was doing well. Uh, I already had, you know, kids, but I wasn't married. And so I felt the pressure uh, that the family was saying, hey, you need to get it together. And so my sister comes in town and she says, hey, when are you going to get married? And it sat on me and I literally decided, OK, well, I'm messing with these three ladies. Which one of these three would be the best one? Oh, I'm going to marry her. She's the prettiest one. This and that. She'll make me look good. The worst decision I ever made in my life. She had drug issues that I thought that I could overcome, that I could make her overcome. Uh, there were things about her that she was just lazy and things like that. And I didn't have standards. And it took me down the path for a couple of years, even though I was only married that year or not even quite a year, it took me down a path that I didn't want to be. And there's people out there now, again, listening that are connected to people or things that are taking them down the wrong path. And it's impacting your decisiveness, your ability to make decisions. You got the wrong folks around you and your standards are low. So it's important that I would say to establish some baseline of what your standards are gonna be in your life. What are your beliefs about who you are and what you believe in? And not only that, once you state those things, you gotta live it. You gotta walk that walk and actually be about what you say your standards are about. And that becomes the hardest part for us, especially as men. A lot of times we are in positions where we need to make a decision, but again, we're impacted about what maybe our father might say or another man in our life might feel about us or they're going to see us as weak if we do it this way. But again, you've got to be true to yourself when it comes to making decisions. So the number one uh, thing that I would say to raise your level of decisiveness will be to establish a standard for your life. Number two, feed. So for me, again, one of the second things that I've done is fed my mind with positive content. So there was a time in my life where I would get up every morning and watch headline news. Oh, my God. It was like I had to turn on the TV within five minutes of waking up just to see what was going on in the world. And, of course, nine out of ten stories are not going to feed my soul the way that I need my soul to be fed, especially at seven o'clock in the morning. Nowhere near what a national men's call would feed you in on a Tuesday or a Thursday morning. And so it's important that. I changed the content that I was consuming in the morning. You know, so now things that I do is I have some positive self-talk. I'm looking in the mirror at my eyes, gentlemen. An exercise that I think we all should do that we may not do as often as we probably should is get up in the morning, look yourself right in the eyes in the mirror and just say, you know what? I love you. I love you. It's, it's harder than it sounds. And there's people out there that probably haven't done it in decades. Get up and tell yourself how much you love yourself. Talk self-talk to yourself. Read positive books. Read the Bible. Get around people that can feed into you. I'm so blessed and fortunate to be a part of, I'm a board member for what's called a King's Accountability Group. This is a group of men from all across the nation, and actually a couple maybe out of the country, that get together every Sunday morning for a call and we feed in, into each other and hold each other accountable to our goals. You need that gentleman in your life. Get around people that are gonna be honest with you about where you're going. 
again, I'm an entrepreneur. So there's days and months where we have tremendous wins financially and, and in our business world. And then there's days where we look up, it's like, man, what happened this month? Where did it go? Why did the numbers turn out this way? What decision was made throughout the process of this particular deal that made things go awry? And trust me, it's happened. Even the most successful man has had opportunities where failures crept into their life. And those are the moments where you're really being tested. So I take my second bullet as feeding myself with positive content. You know, part of my morning routine is we get up right now. Well, right now we're kind of in a unique state. Uh, my wife and I are doing a challenge called 75 Hard. And for those of you that are not familiar with this challenge, it's two 45-minute workouts per day. One of them has to be outdoors. Uh, it's drinking a gallon of water following a particular meal plan, taking a progress picture every day, and reading one page of personal development each and every day. We're on day 66 of 75, gentlemen. My discipline has been taken to an all new level. And I'll be honest with you, I never would have imagined being uh, able to do something this consecutively uh, in my life. And it's made me feel absolutely wonderful. And of course, the one thing in there is no alcohol during this entire time. So my clarity is at a height, heightened state. And I would encourage all of you again to find some challenge, some way to feed something positive into your life, whether it's a challenge, uh, the books that you're reading, the things you're listening to, or the people that you're surrounding yourselves with. So that would be number two, feed yourself with positive content. That has a direct impact on your decision making, because it's making you a person that has a consistency about yourself that's all about positiveness. It's all about helping others. It's all about being uh, right as far as walking the right path. Um, not perfection, but just being on the right path. And you can be more confident in your, in your decisions when you make your entire mindset to everything that you're about solid with those uh, solid standards and also feeding yourself consistently with positive information. Number three, and this one is really where the rubber meets the road for me, is developing daily habits to create my future self. That's my mantra, create your future self. And that means that you have to have a vision about where you're going, who you want to become. And again, that has a direct impact on the way you make decisions. Because the way that our subconscious mind works, gentlemen, is that once you put a solid idea out there, or some goal that you want to pursue, God and the universe and the law of attraction starts moving things out of your way that are obstacles for you. The, or, or even better, they put things in your way that strengthen you to make you the better person so that you can receive those blessings, those goals that you, you've worked so hard to achieve. So it becomes an important process to create a daily habit around the person that you want to become, around the family that you want to build, around the legacy that you want to develop. And again, every decision that you make that you're encountered with is going to start to come through the lens of this person that you're becoming, this positive-minded, standard-having, future-focused person that you're becoming. And it's important that you take a look back. One of the things that uh, Benny had mentioned the other day is to reanalyze the decision once it's been made and being able to look back and, okay, every decision is not the right one. But what have I done in that process that I can grow from? You know, my favorite athlete of all times, Kobe Bryant, Mamba mentality. If I didn't have this virtual screen up, you see behind me the Mamba mentality, a constant quest to be the best version of oneself. I live by that. And it's so important to me that when I make a misstep or I make a bad decision, that I can have humility. And I think this year I learned humility more than everything, more than anything. You know, I've had so many blessings in my real estate life and successes that. It took for me to have one that didn't go so great this year to kind of open my eyes to, hey, let's get back to the basics. What are the steps that I missed? Where did I go wrong in something? Who was brought on in the team? 
did I put them in the best position to be successful? I'm talking to somebody out there that is running a business out there and you want to do it all yourself. How are you putting your team members in positions to make good decisions? Because their decisions have an impact on your business, which has an impact on you. Look at your household. What are you feeding into the people in your household to put them in position to make great decisions or to at least make prudent decisions? Prudent being logical, things that make sense. And a lot of times, again, if you can follow these three tenets of having some standards, feeding yourself with the positive content, creating daily habits around the person that you want to become, then what you start to do is, again, you start to magnetize that person. And so your decisions, you can trust your instinct. You can trust your gut. How many of us out there really can't trust our decisions because we're, again, not being authentic to ourselves? And I'll give you a bonus. And uh, I'm not a certified uh, personality assessor, but I, I, I know quite a bit about it, enough to be dangerous. And I have some friends that are uh, certified and licensed to give what's called a DISC assessment, which is a personality assessment. And I think every single person listening should take a DISC assessment because it tells you a lot about the person that you are, how you make decisions, I took my DISC assessment, and so the D is, are you a decisive person? And it turns out that I'm a super high D. I make decisions like that. It's not always a great thing, because a person on the opposite end of the spectrum is the, suit, is the C. They're cautious. They're systematic. They like things to be kind of broken down. They need to fully understand things to be, uh, be able to make a decision. In the middle is I, that uh, having that interpersonal, being very engaging, the outspoken person, like a like a Johnny Mac guy. He's probably a high eye. He likes to get the crowd going. He steps into the room and it lights up, right? And then there's S, the stable person. Again, they're just going to kind of chug along and do things very system. And it's going to be hard for them to change from that. So I think it's important that we all understand our personality types because that has a direct impact on how we make decisions and when we make decisions. So as I bring this to a close, again, I think that the more that we can become comfortable with who we are and ourselves, then we can be all, all good with being decisive because we can trust that it comes from a positive place, it comes from a good place, a place that, you know, again, we're all here to serve and I am a God-fearing man, even though I said I'm not an ordained minister. I probably preach a lot to the folks that I minister to, my, my young, the young youth that I talk to in our Create Your Future Celtic uh, program, or if I'm coaching a, an entrepreneur through my coaching program, or if I'm working with a, a contractor or even tenants that I manage, you know, in my properties, it all comes down to projecting out a positive image and leaving people in a better place that they were in. So those three bullets again, number one, establish a standard for yourself. Number two, Feed yourself with positive content. And number three, develop daily habits, habits that will allow you to create your future self. My name is Victor Vonico Johnson. You can visit me at victorvjohnson.com if you ever want to get some inspiration or follow Create Your Future Self, my YouTube channel. I love you guys. Dr. Mack, thank you so much. Benny, Reggie, thank you for the invite, gentlemen. Victor, amazing job, brother. I, it's, it was really inspirational. I love it. The, uh, the content that you've given us today for evaluation. And all my brothers, there we, if we get ready to recap this, one of the things that I really liked about in your three-step program to understand and be more decisive, Vic, was establishing your standards. Now, that might be a, a little convoluted because sometimes you don't know what you want, but you do know what you don't want. You know what I'm saying? And so when that, that stuff comes along, you'll be able to be really super decisive because you know that doesn't fit my standard to, to again. And so you're establishing that frequency based on what you do not require in your life. So that was really good. You said on your second one, feed your mind with positive content because the fact of the matter are, is, is that we are what you eat. You know, so whatever you're digesting and put it into your system from your eye gate to, to your ear gates and to what you absorb into your mind and your spirit, you become it, 
right? Proverbs 12 and 15 says, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listen to the advice because one of the things that you said is that we need to have wise counsel because we still need direction. And that's the, that's the positivity of uh, what God has put in place. He's put a tribe together and we have influencers and you want to be around people that help um, um, impact you in a way that you already know how you're going to move because of how they move. You have people in there that you say, what man, that wasn't a wise decision in this particular case. And then what you can do becoming more decisive is, be, is leaning and gleaming on um, men, women in your life that keep you positive and steered in the right direction. Lastly, you said we need to de develop uh, daily habits for your future self. Here's the interesting thing. When have you stopped to cast vision on who you are? And that's imperative. And I don't want it to be missed because in some cases we are so busy being that 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 um, that person that is out here making decisions and doing things. But you have to have quiet moments to say, you know, who, this is the 2022 version of myself. What is the 2023 version of myself? What does God have for me in the future? And so when you cast vision on that, then you can retrofit the plans that take you into that, di di that direction. And in some of these cases, um, Speak, you said something, you know, you, 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 keep, you said this twice is that you're not an ordained minister, but in, in some in cases, I think that might be the calling that you got that you're still dealing with. So if that is the case, it's still impacting your, your, your sphere of influence that you're doing. But what is that? Have we gone back to God, say, God, you know, is there a different direction you want me to go? You know, we got to go back to the creator, right? Because he has the plans and the visions for us, right? And so when we do that, we got we to gotta be able to listen to it, slow up down, and then cast vision on that. And one of the things that you said, I love that you said um, that you got to speak positivity in your life, right? But you also got to speak vision in your life. I am an author. I am a father. I am a uh, disciple that is changing and impacting this planet. And I am replicating myself, right? I'm going in out with the Great Commission and making other disciples. And I'm teaching them the best of me, right? And that's my offering is the best of me, the things that I have, I have done. And so in that space, I have to be intentional. I have to be intentional in that you are taking yourself from point A to B because you are being proactive and not reactive. Nine times out of 10, we don't change until we have to. So we want to help God in this way and help ourselves real low key, help the people around us. When I think about what you're saying in this, uh, um, what Jonah, when he knew he, he was in rebellion, he wouldn't change, but it was affecting the people around him. Now, what happens when we don't do this? We don't develop the habits that we have to. The people around us that we love are affected. Because God still has his word on us won't return void. And so we got to make sure that we're doing this based on, um, you know, not only for us, but the people that we love too. And the last thing that I, uh, that I took note on, it says, based on your personality assessment, you got to know who you are. Our people perish for a lack of knowledge. I perish for the lack of knowledge of self. The first person I'm supposed to know is me. Because the, the interesting thing about it, if I don't know me, I bet the enemy know me. I bet the enemy know my habits. I know that anything, if he's laying traps out here, he, the scripture says that he's out here like a praying lion, that he's looking for me. He's, he, to, to walk out my door and to think I won't come up against the, the adversary is really being naive. And so you got to know yourself because the adversary knows you better than you think you know yourself. Amen. So with all that, brother, it's a great, uh, and I thank you for that, how we become decisive men, and all of it is in knowing who we are and knowing what we don't want, knowing what we do want. Um, we're going to go ahead and close out as we go back into the weekend. What's our next steps? I would think for an assignment, not only just hearing the word, but being a doer of the word, do exactly what you said. Let's establish some standards. 
Let's get in here and feed ourselves with positive uh, content, saying that we love one another. And most importantly, let's start developing, listening to God to say, what's our, our next steps? What's our next version, iteration of ourselves? That's the assignment. Let's take it forward so we can become the men of God that God has intended. Um, so we just offer this real quick, Vic. Heavenly Father, we come before you united as um, the National Men's Prayer Call, a band of brothers that stand before you on morning, Father, looking for instructions because we desire to be the best that we can be. We desire to be uh, influencers, Father, agents of change in this, Father. So keep growing us and growing us, Father, giving us great men like Vic, Father, to pour into us and give us an understanding of who we need to be. So, Father, we thank you. We love you. And now we grow for you. In your son Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, brother.